Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified and Melly Productions, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture. I'm Michael Clark for Meet the Farmer TV. Today we're going to go into La Trois Restaurant and we're going to find out how their passion for food leads them to do not only local produce, but historic Virginia food. So you, you were saying that, that your family's been in the food business for some time. Sometime, uh, it goes back to the Civil War, there was a cook in this, uh, who fought, for, or fought, cooked from Bull Run to Appomattox, survived outstanding odds. Yeah. Uh, his descendants worked on logging boats in Michigan, cooks on the boats. And what it, the eventual culmination was a, a restaurant uh, called Gibbs Country uh, Country House. Uh -huh. All homemade foods, all from farmers in the area, you know, which was their only option, really. You know, this, the movement of back to eating local or being aware of what's available local. I think my generation was the first test market of processed foods. You're making some real efforts to, to bring sort of a, a multinational influence to your menu. You, you've got a, a French influence, and you, you've obviously got a, a non-traditional American name of, of your <laughs> restaurant, but we are so rooted in, in, in American and local culture and, and dealing with the, the local providers. That, that started, I, uh, when we opened up, uh, a good friend of mine said, if I, when I come to Charlottesville what, and I want a Virginia food, uh -huh. you know, and I come to your restaurant, well, what would that be? And I was, you know, I don't know. And that started my journey on to where we are today, talk, talking to you. I, like, well, what is Virginia cuisine? I, I've, um, let me preface this by saying I, my uh, roots, the, the cooking techniques and whatnot, I came from France, where there were five regions. Normandy, famous for its butter. Uh -huh. You know, it tastes like the uh, the ocean is there and comes into the grass, and the cows eat the grass and get that salty, naturally salty wow. taste. That was astonishing. I ate Normandy butter, and I couldn't believe it. Different. Normandy pears and cider, um, Alsace. You know, the, the ducks. Uh, the five regions of France, each distinct yet all part of the same country, but each known for different dishes. And I love that. So. Back to my friend asking me, he's like, what is Virginia food? I, I don't know, but I aim to find out. So I started uh, researching, just asking people around. Uh, I went to Williamsburg and spoke with a master gardener there in costume. And then after two hours, like, can we just, you know, can I ask a question? Because he, he could only answer if I was asking. Like, uh, I really need your help. What was indigenous? What, what did these settlers find here, you know, in, well, in Williamsburg after Jamestown? What did they eat? And what was their food like? And how did they, was it individual farms? Or did they have a main farm? And, you know, how did all this work? And then after that, I went up to Monticello and spoke to people, uh -huh. farmers markets, uh, different farmers. You know, what, what grows in the area? And then it just turned into, well, how can I get that history onto a plate and use the French techniques? I love seasonal, I love the idea that a Vidalia onion is only available a certain time of the year. And, you know, that kind of goes into what we were talking about, um, of mass production of things. And I'm not against any company or, or, or whatnot. I just, my goal is to ver uh, present a plate to our guests that has the freshest, the best flavor, and you know the best that we can offer, uh -huh. and that ties in with the local. And now uh, it's um, business-wise, personally, I'm I love the relationships that are formed in this area. Uh -huh. uh, meeting you, for example, uh, other farmers, um, people with cherries in their backyard, they'll come knock on our door. We heard that you like this. You know, local, would you like some of my cherries? Yeah, absolutely. You know, chestnuts. Uh, people will bring us figs, and uh, I'm I'm astonished by that. And why am I astonished? I, 
again, it goes back to that French regionalism. I just love that we can get that only a fig a couple times a year, you know, a uh -huh. couple weeks a year. So it's interesting that we have these these long relationships that we're going back, you know, more a decade and a half, um, and and so it, it seems to be a very important uh, psychological side that does have some real benefit. I don't. Do you see that? I do. I see. Um, well, first of all, the association of being part of something. Uh huh. A community. The food. Yeah, yeah, the community being a part of that. Uh, people get excited about, you know, these on their plate, knowing that it just came a few minutes away. Even if they don't understand the process of what you do, again, the elves come into play, you know. But, right, yeah. Um, the food, uh, people eating the food, and I've, I've called it food karma, and I don't even know what uh -huh. that means, but if I'm not, Vicky says, you know, be happy and put your, put your love into the food, and maybe that's kind of what you're talking about, but yeah. and like you said, and it does add warmth to the meal yeah, and, you, and the self-satisfaction. You, yeah. you were saying earlier that you know, if it's a skinny chef question in the restaurant, if it's an angry chef, don't go in. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you really got to, to maintain a, a, a sort of a spiritual and psychological purity into the, the love that you're putting into the food to, to have that transfer to the the customers to the clients in the restaurant. I believe that. And the day I lose that is the day I lock the door and I'm yeah. done. So it's, it, it's probably a very important thing then to make the connection with the suppliers. If absolutely. the suppliers are coming in angry or disconnected or it's somebody who doesn't even know what they're delivering in the box to you, it's mm -hmm. not the same connection. as. So, so that, that love and spiritual focus that happens you know, from the seeds going into the ground all the way to the plate really is part of this this local food community system we're trying to build. Oh, tell us about the rose ice cream. We, we had a, in addition to the little baby cucumber, we <laughs> had uh, some, some uh, rose geranium flavored ice creams. So. Yes, Brian, in fact, uh, the other day I was standing here, I was getting ready to leave, and he's like, here, taste this on a spoon. I'm like, what is that? And uh, I tasted it, it was just the most intense rose flavor You'll taste some. Uh -huh. uh, intense, like almost uh, not an explosion, but just overwhelming. Uh huh. Yet delicious, you know the rose flavor. I'm like Brian, that was great because you gave us some some items to take. We right. went in your greenhouse and hey, would you like some of this? And, and I was trying to figure out what to do with the rose geranium, so I I, I put it in a dryer and then Brian, unbeknownst to me, was making this wonderful ice cream. Uh -huh. I think he's gonna make some today, okay. the de dessert, and, and show you. And then... So that's another interesting aspect of these, of these uh, new relationships, working closer with the suppliers and the chefs and the farmers and the chefs, is something that you hadn't really expected or thought of becomes a new creative device. The proof's in the pudding that getting a local product it does taste better. Uh, well, then this was what your dad was describing. Exactly. When he'd go out on the bicycle and he'd get the eggs and he'd get the milk because they just tasted better. Uh, and, and probably there wasn't so much refrigeration then, so if he didn't go get the milk, it probably was more cottage cheese mm -hmm. than milk. So. And I also like the bragging rights of uh, this tomato was on the vine two hours ago. And people, yeah, that's, oh, wow, yeah, you know, that's fun. Or yeah, this potato was in the ground yesterday. You know, that's, uh, and it does taste better. It's so it's really, really bringing it as close to as if you were in your own home garden mm -hmm. and bringing the stuff into the, into the house to feed the family. So, so your, your customers here at the restaurant are really just part of your extended family. Exactly. It's also what we do, and it's very important that our guests get on that plate. They, they get the best that we can offer. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, as you know, you know, there's a lot of balls in the air financially, but you do have to make a decision somewhere. And what are my um, priorities? I, I, like I said earlier, I feel we would be a completely different restaurant, or I'd have to be. I couldn't offer this uh, yeah. local tie-in well, and, that, and that's, that. that's kind of what you're describing with Gibbs, is they, they kept that but, but a, uh, a national chain that was more cost efficient or something that actually caused their market to go down to where they couldn't survive. Yeah, they couldn't compete with uh, 
you know, uh, biscuits from a mix where they had some woman there for 20 years cutting butter into flour and yeah. you know, making the biscuits. So a real art was lost yeah, for, for the sake of, of mass production and efficiency. Mm -hmm. I think you're doing a great job here and you, you've Thank got you. that and you've been here for a long, long time. So. Yeah, I always, you know, each, <laughs> each day, each day is a, but yeah, it's a, yes, so, thank you. Yeah. So we could go to the market and, and get some uh, interaction with you and the vendors and find out what, what people can do. Tell me, you were, you were telling me a little bit about that before of how you, you've already done that in the past years of, of working with the CSA groups and showing people how to use different items and and just kind of educating people on what to do with what's fresh and what's available and what's plentiful right now at the market today. Exactly. Uh, how that started, I contacted the city market and said, would you set aside some space and time for me to come and with that in mind? And she said, great. And the thinking was they wanted a little more education at the market as far as besides speaking to you you know, what to do with some of these. And so I've been going for three years now doing that. And now I had another idea of how to, how to get the word out. Uh -huh. I uh, contacted a local radio station and I just literally sent an email. Would your listeners be interested in a recipe once a week from the market? And uh, he said, I'll, I'll meet you with you Tuesday at three. And I thought, well, wow, okay, let's see what happens. And he said, yeah, I'm very interested in fact. Let's go do a remote show from the city market uh, every week for an hour, or even they're considering top of the hour uh -huh. check-ins as the day progresses. Oh, you know, okay. What are you seeing now? What's happening? It's still uh, infancy, but that's the idea. But he has set aside, he's gonna go remote from seven to eight a.m. Uh -huh. at the market because it's very busy at that time even, yeah. you know, I imagine. I haven't been there at 5.30, but, yeah. you know, where people, but seven, there's people a People are crowded. setting up then, and they're, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're the cranky chef at that point. Yeah, they, <laughs> I know. <laughs> they gotta get it out of the truck. Get it out of the truck. Yeah. But, uh, so, the idea is, I will have a demonstration at that time, uh -huh. speaking with uh, Joe Thomas, it's WCHV, it's AM 1260, and he, his idea is to converse with me, and then we're gonna also speak with the farmers, uh, other vendors, and people from the market, and kind of get a, a market feel, or a, a market, you know, just what's happening at the market right. this week. Uh, it, it'll be fun, because I speak to the people anyway. I get right, a lot right. of people, you know, and they'll even ask me, well, I have this tomato, but what do I do with this one? Yeah. You know, and I love that interaction and relationships. So now we get a market uh, audience, not the more physical market itself. Uh huh. That would even be, you know, they, maybe they're listening and they were driving and you know, they'll see well, what, what's one I have, you know, what's right. happening there at the market. Right. Let's go we get can, some of those blackberries. Eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's get the blackberries or um, the tomato or, you know, whatever it is. Right or just to be, again, part of the community feeling. So that's really part of that, more more of that spirit of, of really connecting everybody to the food. Mm -hmm. It's not just something that fills a, a need of a protein or a starch or a green. It's really to, to bring that whole quality experience and share your passion and love for the food with those people. Exactly. Yeah, exa that's yeah. exactly what it is. That's great. And I get to do something that I've never done before. But uh -huh. You're now a radio host. Yeah, now a radio host. So. <laughs> and I think, too, to actually see the farmer to put a face behind their product will be exciting. Yeah. And what the radio, it'll allow a voice to come alive. And it's our heritage. It's our Virginia culinary heritage. Like you said, I don't want that to disappear. And that's an important part of what you're doing here. It's not and, just a French restaurant. Mm -hmm. You're trying to, to hold that what is what is Virginia food? And uh, I think there's an apple in this bunch here. This apple here, which I believe is called a Golden Crisp, which is unique to Henley Orchards out in Crozet. Uh, Tim Henley actually loads his truck, brings them in every week, 
and he was very proud of that apple. And I think it's been in generations in their family. I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure. Again, proof is in the pudding. You taste it. Extraordinary product. So this is something that's really only available locally. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it, it's uh, generations behind it. Yeah. So that's that's. Uh, so that sense of pride in that family orchard bringing this to you really carries all the way through right to the plate. Exactly. So let's go in the kitchen now and let's see what, what Clark and Brian are preparing for tonight. Here we are in the kitchen of Latois, this huge spacious kitchen. You produce all of the food in this little spot, huh? We do. Yes. And you we're, must we're have some, some uh, very special staff. We Tell do. Who's working here now? This is Brian Wilkinson. Oh, Brian. Nice to meet you. And this is Clark Fisk. Nice Clark. to meet you, sir. All right. Yeah, we're, we, uh, we're very proud of this kitchen due to, I mean, we do in this kitchen what other, say, a kitchen of four or five would do. Uh -huh. I, and I don't think that's bragging. Do you, do you agree? That's fair statement. And, and sometimes it's just two. Yeah. Two. Uh, it's amazing. I'm very proud. Wow. Um, of course, you know, the, uh, the um, raw products help us make wonderful food. I'll turn this off. But this is where the real art happens. This right is, yeah, yeah, this is, yes, where the, uh, the magic happens. Yeah, the, the magic yeah. Happens, yeah. <laughs> as far as, yeah, the elves are back here. Right. And the, the guests, you know, get their food. Well, that's so, great. And uh, I am going to turn it over to Brian. All right, Brian. Who's prepared a couple dishes well, for us. Let's have you cook some stuff and, and show us some of the magic, what the elves do. All right. <laughs> So what Clark's making is uh, our winter salad and uh, with planted earth diversified greens with some uh, Henley Orchard apples, uh, some grilled fennel, and some cheese we get from Polyface um, straight out of Afton. It's a McClure. It's a baby Swiss cheese. And I'm going to prepare two different dishes for you. Uh, one we have is our duck confit. Um, we serve it with lima beans and a little mirepoix. We use uh, fresh sage that we get from Planet Earth. And then I'm going to do my shrimp and grits, which is a recipe I learned. This is the duck fat, and this is what I'm cook the lima beans in. And this is just some bacon. It's a little applewood smoked bacon. You're going to render the fat down so it'll help coat the shrimp. So you're really doing multiple things at the same time. Here. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's a really good chef, man. I try to do everything as quick and as fast as possible. You know, it helps to have a good person, a good backup that can, you know, cover your back when right. you're not. Now tell us what you're doing with the tomatoes now. Uh, I'm just going to grill the tomatoes just to get a nice char on them oh. so they have a good flavor. Uh, it will help stand out with the bacon and the dish. This is uh, a little fresh thyme. Uh -huh. Some fresh sage. Use sage in our cure for the duck confit, so uh -huh. like to cross utilize those flavors and get as much out of every dish as we can. Boy, it's smelling good here. Now Mark mentioned something about it, you're working with like three main flavors on a plate. So you're, you're actually, you're creating that here to, and, and so you've got a, a visual image in your mind of what you're gonna do with that plate. Yeah. Um, we work a lot, me and Clark work a lot together on coming up with different dishes like it mainly happens. We try to do it as seasonal as possible, but we do a lot talking while we're cooking and it, it really helps. You're like, oh, this would be good with this. Uh, this would be a good change if we did it with this. So, you know, like I said, having local farmers and having that good produce that, you know, if it's seasonal, then we're constantly changing because the right. food's constantly changing. So that's yeah, we've seen you come out early in the morning on Saturday and pick up stuff and so it's, it's turned into dinner that night yeah well that's that's one of the things i really love about charlottesville is that you really have that really big farmer's market when i first moved up here like in birmingham we didn't have a good farmer's market no one wanted to go out to it so having so much dedication to it here just yeah. it's so nice it's so refreshing that you know it's just people within care. walking distance yeah. down the road so. yeah i walk there from my house every saturday just to get produce so it's definitely definitely good. That's good so this one of the things mark and i were talking about is that the sort of the personal energy and the passion for what you're doing and and how important that is in in what you produce so by having a, a market that you can go to early in the morning and, 
get excited about some new product and bring it back and you have some creative license you can actually maybe take something from the market that you wasn't on the menu and, yeah. and create something new that evening. Well, that's one of the things last year, uh, walking through and I came by your stand and you had these beautiful yellow wax beans and these just nice big green beans. And I was like, I'm gonna make a green bean salad. I'm gonna put that on the menu. And we ran that for a good month, just having those fresh beans that every Saturday I'd come and pick them up and get them delivered on Thursday. And right. you know, we had this and it was, and they were really good. We enjoyed <laughs> and then it's just a little fresh lemon uh -huh. and some butter just to help mount the sauce for the shrimp and rice. We've got a lot of stuff going on all at once here. <laughs> We like to serve just the leg. It's a good appetizer portion. Uh -huh. We save the thigh meat and put that with a duck confit salad that Mark serves at lunch. Uh -huh. So everything you're doing now even in the in the presentation is to to convey that level of love and quality that's that's in the food right from getting up in the morning and going to the market to to now here in the kitchen preparing it for uh, for dinner Saturday night if if you don't love what you do then you shouldn't do it and that's one of the things that I've always just been about with cooking is that it's not my job it's what I enjoy doing I mean I go home and cook dinner like at maybe midnight but I'm still doing it Saturday you know Sundays on my day off you know maybe I'll barbecue maybe I'll you know just grill or have some people over and you know just cook for everybody but I, it's it's what I enjoy doing it's not it's not just my job it's yeah I know, think we have a, a lot of farmers like that are like just please buy my stuff so I can keep planting it Uh, this is just a little micro basil, just to help add another little flavor, but also an extra touch. What's very important here is trying to have your timing down because you're right. We don't we don't have a heat lamp. We don't have the space, and on a good night we can maybe do six plates all at once. And so, like having a big table, we have to really depend on a good front of the house staff uh -huh. to be able to take care of those people, to get the food out on time and make sure that everything, you know, is the way it should be when it leaves the kitchen. All right. This is one of the extra challenges to, to maintain the art and still have the production. Yep. We just, consistency is very important to us. And to have a good front of the house staff that realizes that and that can, you know, help us achieve that is right. very important. So we're here, it's it's like late February, early March. Are these uh, some of the more popular menu items? Um, the duck confit, it's, it kind of comes and goes. People, do, like if they know what it is, people really enjoy it. Uh -huh. um, then shrimp and grits is always a decent seller. Uh -huh. So what do you see coming in the next, the next few months? I mean, it's only a couple of months before you get to start going to the market again. and. There'll be some, some uh, maybe coal crops or broccoli, cabbage, that's things starting up. We, um, turnips. We're still kind of stuck in winter right now, so we're still just every day just kind of evaluating everything. Like uh -huh. going out to the farm definitely helps because when you get those, those products and you see them fresh, you see them growing, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very good touch and it's very nice. So Brian, it seems like you, sh you should have a, a video or a photographer here every <laughs> night catching these works of art. Um, I mean, it would be nice. It, <laughs> I wouldn't be complaining about it. Right. Tell us what, what this is, is, what you just um, assembled here. Well, when we were out at the farm the other day, uh, 
the greenhouse manager asked me if I liked fried green tomatoes, and I was like, yeah, I'm from Alabama. I was like, I was raised on fried green tomatoes. Uh -huh. Like, that's what I enjoy. And so the first thing, I, I saw the little ones, and he was like, I said, I was like, I would really want to fry those. And he commented, he's like, oh, they might be too tough. So the first thing I thought was to take a skewer. Uh, we have a little skewer. Uh -huh. And so I just put enough oil in the pan to cover the tomato up to a certain height. And so uh -huh. just dipped it in a little tempura batter and stuck it in the oil and fried them up. Wow. Um, not something we actually have space to do during service, but it's a nice touch and it's definitely something I wanted to try seeing those tomatoes. I really wanted to see if I could make it happen. So, yeah, tell us tell us about this new dessert. All right. Um, well, when we were at the farm, y'all uh, y'all were talking about how y'all had made a rose oh. gelato, and uh, so what we have is I made a little rose gardenia gelato. Wow. Um, I actually added a little color to it with a little beet juice uh -huh. just to get that rose color but yeah you just steep the leaves in with the cream and then you make your ice cream base out of that we also have a lemon verbena um, creme anglaise just as a little oh my. sauce it the being really sweet it the lemon verbena really helps balance out the ice cream So this, so this is a new creation that, that just came from uh, actually yeah. visiting a local farm and, and giving you some new ideas. Yeah, y'all, yeah, exactly. Y'all gave me the idea for the ice cream and I was like, well, that would be the best way to utilize in the month of February the products that we can get and try to use them the best we can. So, so. here we have, we have fried green tomatoes in February. We have a special rose flavored ice cream, both of those inspired by a visit to a farm. And we have uh, a salad that has a, a special, uh, uh, what is it, a ginger crisp or, or golden crisp apple from Henley Orchard? Uh, yeah, we get three different varieties. Uh, you no, know, the Jonathan, I think the they have their own special variety that's uh -huh. an heirloom. And uh, we get that, and I think the last one is honey crisp. Honey crisp, yeah. So we have an heirloom apple on this salad. Hmm? This is a uh, duck confit. Uh, slow cooked, cured for one day with salt and uh, lots of flavors of sage, orange, cinnamon. Um, yeah, and then we slow cook it in the oven and serve with some lima beans cooked in the duck fat and a little mirepoix and fresh sage at the sage flowers. Terrific. And then uh, really rich and creamy shrimp and grits with grilled tomatoes and fresh micro basil. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of Meet the Farmer TV. We've gone truly from the farm to the plate tonight, and now it's time to eat. <laughs> for additional information and extended versions of this program, visit our website, www.meetthefarmer.com. Meet the Farmer TV was made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified and Melly Productions, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture.